Hi, John with eTrailer. Look, you deserve a great flat towing experience, and today we have the components here that are gonna do that for you. We have a 2023 Chevrolet Silverado 1500 Z71, so that's gonna be the four x four package. We have a motor coach here that has air brakes on it, and we're gonna take a look, quick overview of some of the components that's required to get it, this Chevy to flat tow behind the coach. First things first, we're gonna look at the physical connection here. This is gonna be our tow bar, and this links up the Chevy with the motor coach here. Uh, second thing you're gonna need is gonna be a supplemental braking system of some sort. Now our coach has air brakes, so this is an air brake system. We also have systems for hydraulic or electric brakes. Third thing you need is gonna be safety cables. Now in this instance here, this is a brand new Nighthawk uh, tow bar. It comes with the safety cables. So when you're looking at stuff like that, keep that in mind. Fourth thing you need, you're gonna need some sort of diode wiring. This is gonna transmit the signals like turn signals, tail lights, and brake lights from the back of your coach to the back of your Chevy. And the fifth thing you're gonna need is the base plate. That's gonna be the physical connection that we actually attach to the front of the Chevy that hooks up to the tow bar to make all of this possible. Now, additionally, on these Silverados, to be able to flat tow, you need one more component that uh, not all vehicles need, but this one does, and that's gonna be a battery disconnect switch that mounts under the hood by your battery. Now, we installed one on this Chevy, and we do have a video showing the installation on our website. Now, specifically today in this video, we're going to be taking a closer look at Demco's Air Force One supplemental braking system that we installed on the Chevy. Now, this unit um, is for coaches that have air brakes. Now, if you have hydraulic brakes on your coach, um, Demco makes another unit, it's called the Stay and Play, and that's what you would use there. Um, both of these units, in my opinion, are some of the best supplemental braking systems out there. I really like their simplicity. I like the fact that they're proportional um, and they're fairly easy to install. Um, but this unit in particular is gonna tie into your coach's air brakes and it uses that air pressure in conjunction with the main operating unit that we mounted behind this bumper here uh, to apply the brakes on your Chevy anytime that you apply the brakes on your coach. And some of the nice features that they have um, is on our system today, there's a red LED uh, indicator light that we applied to the rear view mirror and this coach has a rear view camera. And when you do apply the brakes, the LED indicator light is gonna light up on your Chevy, letting you know that your system is working properly. Um, also, if there's a problem with the system, if that red light is staying on, you know while you're driving down the road and you can get pulled over and check it out. I like stuff like that. It kind of makes it foolproof. Um, a step up from that would be the coach link, the wireless coach link kit. That's not this kit today, uh, but there's a little bit of an upgrade if you wanted to get that one. That one is, has a unit that you mount on your dash and that LED lights up, lets you know that everything's working properly. So for this system here today to get it installed, um, it, it's something that gets a little bit involved, but if you're, if you're handy with tools, this is a pretty uh, less invasive system than some of the other ones out there. Um, you're gonna have your main operating unit, you're gonna have the brake cylinder, you're gonna have things that you need to install, but we walk through it step by step. The wiring is pretty simple on it. The plumbing isn't too bad. If you wanna see what it takes to install this Demco Air Force One unit on the Chevy and the coach, stick around and we'll show you step by step. Now, before we begin our installation, I wanted to go over uh, just a few of the main components of the operating system here. I like to do this anyway to keep it organized. There's a lot going on in this installation um, and it's hard also to show it on the vehicle and not get too confusing. So uh, real quick, we have the main operating unit here. You're gonna have the brake cylinder. You're gonna have the LED indicator light. You're gonna have our breakaway switch here. Coiled air hose that goes in between the towed vehicle and the tow vehicle. And then finally we have our air tank uh, that's on the compressor and this supplies all of the air to our braking system. Now to begin our installation, I like to start on the front of the truck and we're going to install uh, the breakaway switch. As you can see, we already have a base plate and diode wiring installed. If you're looking to do that as well, you can check out our videos on our website. Um, we have a bumper bracket that's behind this that we can tie this to. So it's gonna be a good solid secure mounting. So first thing we're gonna do is cut this um, air dam right here 
to allow this to be inset. Today I'm going to be using an oscillating tool to cut into this plastic. It does cut pretty easy. You could probably get by with a razor knife as well. So using a mixture of the oscillating tool and a razor blade, we were able to cut a rectangular notch out in here. We'll be able to slide the breakaway switch in, mount it flush with the bumper. So this is the bumper bracket on the Chevy that we're going to be drilling uh, and bolting our breakaway switch to. So I've got a right angle drill. And I'm just gonna mark this and then get it drilled out. Now we can use the uh, included hardware. You're gonna have a hex bolt, flat washer, and nylock locking nut, and we can get this secured. Now before we install the main operating unit, our truck is equipped with electric assist brakes. Now you, on your truck, you need to figure out um, if your truck is electric assist, hydro boost, or vacuum assist. So if it's hydro boost or electric assist in your kit, you're gonna get a little kit here that has a small cone seal, an acorn nut, and then a plug. Your kit also comes with 3 8 inch vacuum tubing. Cut a small section of that off. And what we need to do is we're going to insert the cone seal into the Venturi exhaust here and then tighten down this acorn nut. This is an 8 millimeter. And then on the vacuum port here, we're just going to push the plug in on one side. And seal off the vacuum port. If you're having trouble getting that on, you can use a little soapy water. But now this is ready to install on our truck. Now on the Chevys, we found that uh, mounting the main operating systems here um, on the back side of the bumper, since we were under here anyway installing our breakaway switch, they mount really nice and there's plenty of room to get them installed on the back side of the bumper here. Okay, so we have our main operating system mounted. Of course, we have the back side of our breakaway switch here. So while we're here, we're going to do a couple of connections. On the main operating unit, you're going to have two black wires. One of these needs to go to frame ground, and the other one needs to go to the black wire on our breakaway switch. It doesn't matter what goes where. So we'll begin with the supplied ring terminal that comes in your kit. Now I just ran it behind the unit here. And I'm going to use a self-tapping screw and we're going to screw it into the frame. So here's a better shot of uh, where we made the frame ground. It's just really tight under here. And so um, we just used a self-tapping screw and made sure that we tapped into the frame and not an additional accessory like a bumper beam or the bumper itself. Our next connection is going to be the other black wire from the main operating unit. It's going to connect with the black wire from our breakaway switch. Now, today I'm going to be using uh, heat shrink butt connectors. We have these available here at E-Trailer, or you can pick these up at almost any uh, home store or auto parts store. These are just going to protect a little bit better against corrosion. Now, the red wire from the breakaway switch it's going to be routed up to the battery. On these Chevys, this just isn't long enough to reach uh, up there. So I dropped an extra wire down from the engine bay. We made a connection here and then ran this up to the battery. Now, since we've been working underneath the front bumper of the Chevy, there's one more thing we need to do under here. It's going to be for the air fitting that's on the vehicle side. Um, today, we're going to mount it just under here to the bumper. We're going to have to trim out this back panel here to allow this to pass through and we'll just get this bolted up. I've just marked this off. I've mocked it up and marked it. I'm gonna use an oscillating tool today. Uh, you can also use a razor blade to cut this plastic. Now that we have this cut, so it'll allow this fitting through, we can get this bolted to the bumper. Now we've got the one side drilled in. We're gonna be using the center punch. Since this is a pretty tough location on the Chevy, being that it's a chrome bumper and it's at an angle. You really want to make sure your drill bit's not going to walk. Or in our case, our self-tapping screw that we're going to be using to hold that on. I'm also using a quarter-inch extension and a three-eighths-inch 
socket to run this uh, so that we can get the right the right angle we need here. Now before we install this, it's probably going to be easier to hook our airline up. Now we're only going to be going from right here to the main operating unit, so we don't need much. And in your kit, you're going to get a lot of quarter inch tubing. Um, this is to be used on the truck side and on the RV side, so they usually give us plenty to work with, but use it sparingly right now. Now the fittings on both the main operating unit and this one here are quick connect. Basically you'll just push these in and then you'll kind of feel it click into position and it should be locked in. If you ever need to remove this for any reason, just push in on that outside collar and it'll pull right out. I'm going to run this inside the bumper right now, and we'll get this screwed up to the bumper. Once it's mounted, we can head underneath to the main operating unit and make our connection there. Now we're going to have some different ports on the main operating unit. You'll have air in and air out. Air in is what we're looking for. This is the air in from the RV. Push that in, make that connection. Make sure you don't make too much of a sharp bend on this tubing so that it kinks it. So up here in the engine compartment, over here on the passenger side is your battery. Um, this is gonna be the wire that we pulled up from the bottom side. This is actually the orange wire from our breakaway switch. Now in your kit, you're gonna get a fuse holder um, and you're gonna get some brown wire here. And we're upgrading to a larger size uh, ring terminal. This is going to be a 5 16th ring terminal and of course our heat shrink butt connectors. Um, when making this connection up here, uh, if you're going to be flat towing your Silverado, you need a battery disconnect switch. We're also going to be doing a video on that and installing one on this truck. Uh, but when we, and it's not here now, um, when we go and make our connections later in the video, we'll show you where to hook this up on that. So for right now though, we're going to cut our fuse holder get everything else set up for the connection at the battery disconnect. So one side of the fuse holder is going to get the ring terminal. Now, on the other side of that is going to be one side of the butt connector. Then we're gonna take our breakaway switch wire and this brown wire here. And we'll loop these two together on one side. The brown wire is gonna get run inside through the firewall on the driver's side. And this is gonna power our LED indicator light. So by hooking it up this way, it's going to be fused still with the main fuse and, uh, and going down to our breakaway switch. This ring terminal will connect to the breakaway switch. We're going to be mounting that on the firewall right here. So the brown wire for the kit where we made the connection at the battery, I just ran it up on these Silverados. We got this little trim panel here um, and I was able to run the wire across the engine compartment like this. Now our final destination is going to be um, if you look, you'll have a, your, your hood cable here, and if you follow that down, there's going to be a grommet um, at the firewall that you're able to push in towards the footwell. And so we're going to finish running this wire underneath our surge tank here, and we're going to run it down and into the driver's side footwell. Probably the easiest way to get it down into the driver's side footwell is using a pull wire, or I've got some spare tubing that's left over from another flat toe. Just, I like to run the wire down inside of here, enough that I know that it's not going to pull out, and then just pull our line through. Now that we have our location where we're going to be passing through the firewall uh, into the driver's footwell, we might as well take some more of this quarter-inch tubing 
uh, we need to connect this tubing from the main operating unit down to the bumper that's going to run under the engine and into the firewall and this is going to go eventually to our brake cylinder. So we ended up pushing the wire from the driver footwell out. Um, it was easier to grab this wire here uh, and we ran it you know, through the engine bay again keeping in mind anything that's moving or hot or sharp. Um, we're going to cut the very end off of here get a nice clean cut on it and our connection here this is for our brake cylinder that's going to be the air out this is going to feed the brake cylinder and now when it comes to installing the LED indicator light uh, this is going to stick to the back of your rearview mirror so um, this little centerpiece up here will just pull down I've already got it pre loosened here um, but it just has pins on it and it'll it'll come down we're going to feed the wires up right here at the base of the rearview mirror. And we'll feed it all the way through. You want to make sure that you leave enough wire um, so that you can still adjust the mirror and that it won't pull on it if you go way down or up and down. So right now we're going to leave it loose. We're going to leave this loose. Also recommend wearing gloves while you do this. This way when you touch your headliner you're not going to get any oils from your hands that will discolor the headliner. This is just going to basically tuck back behind your headliner here and you can use a trim panel tool and feed it back behind it. Now when we get over to the A pillar here, um, a few things we need to consider. We're going to have an airbag in this region, so this wire will have to go on the outside of it. Uh, nothing, uh, you don't want anything facing on the inside with an airbag. You're going to have two panels here that got to come out. These will have a little clip at the bottom, 10 millimeter bolt on the inside. So we can pull that. We may have to pull down on the rubber weather stripping to loosen this up enough. This quarter inch nylon tubing is pretty indispensable so when you're done with your flat toe definitely hang on to some of this. So I ran this behind our A pillar behind the airbag and came out here. We can feed the end of the indicator light Okay, and by feeding it from the outside in we can ensure that we're actually behind the airbag on the outside of the vehicle. Once you have the bolts back in, you can pop the access panels back. And then on the mirror side, all we have to do is remove the double stick tape, which could be the hardest part of this job. All right. And then we're going to attach this. The low point on the mirror since it has kind of an obstruction here but uh, this is still going to be able to be seen if you have a camera on your coach so and if you if you're wondering if it will you can also take your mirror and, and angle it up sometimes I know people have done this uh, just to be absolutely sure that they can see it so but this will work for us now when it comes to installing the brake cylinder you're going to have uh, diagrams in the instructions to help you set it up but I want to walk through a few of the important steps um, that we need to consider. Number one, if your Silverado has adjustable pedals you need to make sure the pedals are adjusted closest to the seat before you set your brake system up. They can be adjusted afterwards uh, to move them away for comfort when you drive it but whenever you go into the toe position the adjustable pedals need to be moved all the way closest to the seat so that your brake system is going to function properly. Um, the next thing you need to do is when placing the cylinder 
on the pedal, you want to make sure that it's up high enough that you're not going to contact it with your foot, but low enough that it's still going to get good leverage to be able to pull this down. Third rule here, the back of the cylinder here needs to be at least three and a half inches away from the firewall. So um, if on the Chevy, uh, the way that the cylinder comes um, from Demco, it's set up already fine. If you needed more room, this plate can be flipped backwards. We don't need to do it on the Silverado though. There's enough room here. Um, one of the other rules here is where we attach at the firewall. You need to cut away any insulation so that the plate that you screw down on the firewall here is metal to metal contact. There's no carpet or insulation in between these two. You need a nice, strong, secure uh, attachment point. And then the angle, finally, of this cable needs to be within an inch up, down, left, and right of the cylinder. As this pedal depresses, you'll see the angle can change. So do your best to make sure the cable is straight in line and within an inch of the angles left and right. What that's going to do is reduce cable wear and reduce the likelihood of this cable breaking. Now when it comes to wiring up the brake cylinder inside, I have this labeled out. Um, hopefully this is going to be easy to understand. It's almost impossible to wire this up live on camera with just these space requirements. So uh, the brown wire that you see there is the uh, battery positive that we ran in from the engine compartment. That gets hooked up to the brown wire on the brake cylinder, uh, which is labeled brake cylinder uh, on the tape there. Now on the other side of the brake cylinder, the blue wire is going to connect to our red wire on the LED indicator light. The other side of the LED indicator light, the black wire, is going to get connected to the factory ground. So that's it as far as the electrical connections. Now plumbing wise, the brake cylinder is only going to take that quarter inch airline tubing and it connects the exact same way that we've been connecting up on the main operating unit. This is just a a quick connect fitting, uh, just do the same thing, measure off your tubing, get a nice clean cut on it, and plug it in to the brake cylinder. Find a mounting location uh, for the battery disconnect and then make the appropriate hookups here under the hood. Now there are some rules to mounting this. Um, basically it needs to be, obviously with the cable length, it needs to be within reach of the battery and this also needs to be mounted up and down like this. This is a uh, Kind of a, uh, this switch is helped by gravity and it uses gravity as well, so make sure that you mount this um, with the switch in this position here. Today on our Silverado, we're probably going to be tapping in back here on the firewall. It's metal back there. It's within reach of the positive post of our battery, so this is going to be our mounting location. Now the two cables on your battery disconnect are going to be marked for you. Um, one is going to be for the battery post. That goes to the actual battery itself. The other one, the battery cable, will go to um, wherever you're going to hook up to the rest of your truck with. On our Silverado today, if we lift up our cover off of our battery, it's going to expose the positive battery post. And then we have a fuse plate here that we're going to be disconnecting um, we're going to have to do some modifications to this. This isn't the easiest disconnect uh, to install on this type of truck. So uh, first thing we need to do is disconnect the plate here. You're going to need a 13 millimeter socket. Now as long as you're careful um, not to touch your metal wrench to anything else on the truck, you can do this. Otherwise, if you're cramped on space, safest thing to do would be to disconnect the negative terminal on your battery and then proceed with this. Pop that off. Put this plate up. We're just going to slightly bend that out of the way for now. Now we can remove the battery post. That's going to take a 10 millimeter socket. Loosen that up. We're going to need to take some tin snips or aviation shears. We need to cut the jump tab off of this. Now 
Now with the jump start tab trimmed, what we need to do is rotate our battery clamp um, to fit back down on here, but we're going to have to trim the uh, battery tray up here. So uh, this can be done either, again, with your aviation shears or a razor knife, but we need this to sit flat and be able to uh, clamp down on the battery. Now we'll pull this wire out of the way so we don't trim. I'm going to use an oscillating tool um, in this instance here. It's going to give us a little bit of control. And this tab here, I pulled out and I'm able to lift it off the battery. So there isn't anything under here that we need to worry about. So just be careful when you cut this. So this is a tab we cut out. We can test fit this by clipping it back down. We can see that it sits nice and flush, um, so that'll be good for our connection here. Now we can tighten down the battery post again with the 10 millimeter. You can take the uh, wire marked battery post, and on the Chevy here, they already have a routing um, channel here for this, so we're going to run this in and we'll make the connection right here and then just use the factory flange nut and tighten this down. The cable that's marked battery cable, this is going to connect to our plate fuse. We're going to bring this over. Now the Chevy already has channels built into this. Uh, so the hardware you're going to get is going to be a shorter hex bolt. It's going to have two star washers and then the nut. This is what we're going to use to secure the cable to the fuse plate. So we'll grab the uh, wire marked battery cable. And on the Chevys, we have a channel that we can run the cable right through here. Make sure you get the factory connector in line there. We're going to set this. So I've got the bolt and one star washer. I'm going to run that up from the bottom. Then we're going to use the other star washer and the bolt and tighten this down. It's going to be 13 millimeter uh, hardware, so a wrench and a socket can tighten this up. You can bend the tab back down. Then we can take the cable marked battery post. And we're going to run this in. And when we reconnect, you may see some sparks, so try to keep, um, try to keep good contact on the battery post here. And then tighten that down with the factory nut, which is 13 millimeter. Now with our connections made, we can replace the cover. And we can move on to connecting the ground wire. So today we're going to be using a larger terminal. That way I can hook directly up to the battery negative right here. You'll get a self-tapping screw. If you want to screw in somewhere, um, feel free to do so. This is really just for um, convenience today. And we'll need a 10 millimeter socket to loosen this up. And tighten it back down can run the wiring for the switch. Today we're going to be running this inside the driver compartment. So to get across the engine bay right here, we can just fold this insulation down and kind of tuck it back up and in here. Now we are going to have a fuse holder on here, so we don't want to completely bury that part of it, but we'll get this run across. Um, and if you follow your hood cable, like your hood release, down and in, you're not going to be able to see it on camera, but follow that down. You're going to have a rubber grommet that's in the firewall. You can push that in, and then you'll be able to just go right into the driver's footwell. Now I've pulled the wire through the footwell and then up to this uh, side panel here. Um, this just pops off with these clips. I like putting the, the switch up here. Um, because once the door is shut, we have about 
uh, at least a half inch of gap in between here and here. This is one of those switches that you don't want to accidentally bump when you're driving down the road. This is going to kill all power to the truck. So I like to set it off um, where it's kind of hidden and it's kind of impossible for you to accidentally bump this. It's also a nice uh, anti-theft feature as well over here. So we need to drill a 5 8 inch hole into this plastic. Um, so we're going to mark this and drill it out with a step bit. Now I've marked my step bit here in red so I know that when I get down to 5 8 Now we can test fit the switch. Just take the uh, nut off the back side of it. That's going to fit nice. So we can tighten up the back of it. You can wire up the connector. Now the connector you're going to get with the kit is going to have a blue wire and a yellow wire, which for us doesn't make any sense, but I will tell you that the blue wire is going to be the negative and the yellow wire is going to be the positive. So you're also going to get some butt connectors in the kit. So we have this crimped down. Um, we got the red to yellow, blue to black. And then as far as the connector, you're going to see the spring clip on here. And on the switch on one side, you're going to have a little tab. So that spring connector goes to the tab here. Just push it in until it clicks. Now that our switch is hooked up, we can install the supplied fuse. And we can give our disconnect switch a test. Now this doesn't happen a lot. Um, we went to test our switch and it's not working. And we do want to let you know that, that we ran into a situation where this switch is wired incorrectly. Um, if we take this off and just reverse the switch around, now our disconnect switch is working correctly. So you have a couple of options here. Um, you could keep it like this, and I would wrap some tape around this to keep it from vibrating loose. It's still a nice tight fit. Or um, you can leave the center blue plug, and you can pull the yellow plug. Show you how it's wired correctly. You could pull the yellow plug back out and push it in on this position, and then it would be wired correctly. So if you're doing this at home and you're, you're um, disconnect switch doesn't work, check this. Now I've zip tied some of the excess wire back and we can get this panel back installed on the truck. So this is going to be the final product here. Um, we've got our switch installed here. I think it looks great over here. I also think from a safety standpoint, uh, this is pretty paramount to put it uh, somewhere that is out of the way that you know kids can't get to it. You, you know, you don't accidentally hit it with something or if you have a pet, uh, get loose in the car that it's just out of the way and when you close the door you don't have access to the switch. Now back under the hood we can finish up our installation by hooking up the main battery power for our operating unit. It's going to be underneath this plastic cover on the battery. You can lift this up. Now what you're seeing here are the cables going to our battery disconnect switch. Uh, like I said if you're going to flat tow your Chevy you need a battery disconnect switch here. Um, if you want to see how we installed it on this truck, just check out our web page and we've got a video on it. So 13 millimeter socket is what we need and we're going to go right to the battery terminal, the battery post itself because the main operating unit needs to have battery power. With the flange nut off secure the ring terminal to the battery post. Now something we need to watch is going to be the fuse holder here. We want to make sure that we have enough room on the back side. And it's going to be a tight fit, but it will work. You can just tighten all this back down. And now we can take the supplied 10 amp fuse and insert that into the fuse holder. Close the cap. And then we can reinstall the cover. 
Now the other half of the Air Force One braking system is going to be on the coach side. We're going to be installing the air tank on the coach and running um, the lines to the back so we can tie in to the Chevy. Now uh, this is going to require us to tap in and tie into our coach's airlines, both the supply line and the emergency line. Uh, we're going to have um, quick connect fittings, 5 eighths and 3 eighths. And we're going to be showing you where to tap in on this. This is a Freightliner chassis uh, and showing you where we're going to mount our air tank. All of this work that we're going to be doing right now um, with the tank and tapping into the valves is all being done right here just in front of the drive axle. We're here at the back of the axle. You've got the brake chambers on either side here. The tank, we're going to start with first mounting the tank and this quick release valve that supplies our brake chambers with air, this is where we're going to be mounting it up. We've got these two bolts from the factory. That's going to be perfect for our air tank. So I temporarily lowered the quick release valve from the factory and I tucked the tank in underneath this plate. Uh, just for me, it makes a little bit more sense for structural integrity. So I'm going to get these washers and nuts put back on. Okay, with the tank mounted, we're going to move uh, to the airlines. Now when identifying the airlines, um, you're going to look for a big valve that has um, electric lines run to it. This is your Wabco Air, this is the ABS valve. Um, so you're going to have multiple lines going into this and coming out of this. Ones that we're, that we're looking for, uh, I have marked in blue. So the supply line way up here, marked in blue, this is going to be 5 eighths inch line. Now these connections here are quick connect fittings, just like we saw in the main operating unit. They work the same way. You press that outer collar, and the air hose will slide out. Um, the next line we're looking for is going to be the smaller 3 8 inch line. This is our metered line. When you press your brakes, this is what tells this system how much air to feed into your braking system. So, uh, same deal. This line is typically smaller. Uh, it's typically black like this, uh, but it may not be on your coach. So, same thing. Uh, quick release valve. These pop off. So, these we're going we're gonna to cut and we're going to install the factory T-fittings into these. Also a quick side note, before you begin any work on your braking system, you want to make sure that your air pressure has been lowered down to zero. You can do that by stepping on your brakes repeatedly on and off um, to lower your tank pressure down to zero. Now I've disconnected and pulled down the metered line just so we could make it a little bit easier to see the installation here. Um, one important thing you need to do is clean the outside of these hoses before you cut them and before you install them. These quick connect fittings have a rubber o-ring on the inside and that's what creates the seal on either side. So I'll be cutting this today with a razor knife hose cutter like this. It's probably your best bet. You can cut it with a razor knife. Um, you just want to make sure your cuts are nice and square and clean. So we'll insert, these are the same push connect fittings, just push until it stops. Same here. And then this is what we're going to be connecting our quarter inch line to. Now we're going to repeat the same process for this 5 8 inch hose. It's just up there a little bit. We may not be able to show this on camera. Now with our T-fittings on, I'm going to show you where they go. The bigger 5 8 inch line, supply line, is going to go into this quick fitting here. The metered line, the smaller 3 8 inch black line, is going to go in here. And this side port here is where we run uh, the air hose to the back of the coach for the Air Force One. With the other connections made on the tank, we're going to run this line to the back now. Um, when you do it, um, just make sure you keep away from uh, moving parts, hot parts, and sharp parts. So I ended up running the tubing kind of inside the frame with the other airlines that run to the back here. Your situation is going to be different depending on which coach you have. Uh, same, kind of the same deal with the bracket back here. I had to make an angle bracket. Um, this silver bracket that you see comes with your kit along with the air fitting and the quick connect that we're going to hook our hose up to. That comes with it, but 
Uh, we just didn't have a good place to bolt up to it on this coach, so I uh, ended up making a bracket. You may have to do the same thing with yours, but again, um, made a clean cut on this. And the quick connect fitting. Then uh, from here on, I'm going to uh, just use the zip ties in the kit and get the hose secured underneath the coach. And once you have everything secured under there, that's really going to do it. We got the Chevy side done, and now we have the coach side done. And that's going to complete our look at some of the features and the installation of Demco's Air Force One supplemental braking system on our 2023 Chevrolet Silverado 1500.